Okay, welcome everybody. I think we're Marilyn's just a little bit late. Uh, and the reason I believe she's not coming. Mom told me she very likely will not be here. And uh, so we have a and we're gonna get started. Okay, there are no members of public here to make a public comment. So we'll go on to approval of the minutes. We're gonna have to take care of the reading them. Um, can people help me remember page six, the vote we took about the, um, the neighborhood planting project? So it says the motion was to make a decision on our community application process and for the cycle to choose the Prospect Street project. Did we? I, I, I seem to remember slightly differently, but you know, you may have listened to it again a second time, and so that was the exact wording. But my understanding was that we were uh, voting to accept that the process that we created as a, as the process, you know, which was to use that spreadsheet that we had created and to evaluate the um, the applications, looking at the data provided on the spreadsheet, and then we voted to accept the prospects. Am I right in remembering that, or do folks remember it differently? That there was two motions. No, that it was. Uh, so this says. The motion was to make decision on our community application process and for this cycle to choose. You made the you made the motion, Sue. Um, I I own it. My recollection is we were choosing a project. Okay. But maybe I'm. All right. Yeah. There was you a nuance the there. So so is that does this reflect well what you what you said? From what I recall, okay. that we were. All right. I thought that we were project. also. I thought we were also kind of accepting the uh, the the way we we went we created the decision making, which was that we laid out this spreadsheet and that we were making the decision based on the way we chose laid out. And help with that. I can find it in 
reporter if you want. <laughs> I, I don't think we. I don't think this needs to be an issue. I mean, it's really your motion. So if you feel like it reflects what you said, then I'm good with that. Yeah. Are you comfortable? Okay. okay. <coughs> All right. Do we have a motion to accept these minutes? Page, I was near page four top says 147 trees were removed and they will be I guess required to be replaced instead of the replacements. Yeah. Also, does anyone remember the, the bullet above that says an inventory of the trees would be required and all over 20 inches would be required to be replaced? Is that the provision in the significant tree ordinance that it pertains to trees over 20 inches? Yeah. I think the, I think she's just missing the word to do replacements. Yeah, so it's just the word to. They will be required to do replacements. I have a small on page one. Uh, Chair report: the trees were planted under an old agreement that is not binding. Um, well, the one that it, there is a two-year agreement that the homeowner signed saying that they would take care of the trees for two years. Um, there, so that, that property owner will have to sign that? Yes. And, and so, probably within two years, I don't know what, uh, what the senior planner had. <clears throat> but I guess it's because they're trying to develop the property. Is that how they got in there, Rich? Because Rich will speak to the senior planner about the situation. So yeah, the yes, that, that's the property that's on the corner of South and Olive. But so, I, I needed to have an update from her as to where the project's at, and apparently it's collapsed. Oh, well, well, anyway, I, I could send you the, the sign for the tree so for two years. That would be fine. So maybe we should change that to that was not recorded on the deed? Because yes. that's actually more accurate, right? That's right. But, yeah. Okay, so we're changing that back to say that was not recorded on the deed. Yeah. Small thing, but I want to get the street yeah. straightened out, so I'll send that to Rich. So I'll do it for better. Anyone? For a motion? I move to accept the minutes. As amended? Yes, as amended. Okay, second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Uh, abstain? Aye. Okay. Uh, oh. You abstain. Yeah, it wasn't. All right. Uh, I'm on my way. We'll be five minutes late. Sorry, I got tied up in Kestrel. Okay, so now I'm on the way. All right. Uh, chair report. Um, my daughter uh, got the flu going around that everyone got, and so she lost her voice for 10 days, but it came back and she wow. finished the recordings of Tree Speak. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think they sound lovely. And so that, that she's going to be sending them over to Karen. So we are moving right along on that. Um, everybody knows that Rich got treated for two years And that Molly was also um, awarded at the ceremony for her work. Okay, congratulations. Um, congratulations to you, Molly. Um, and I've been working with the mayor uh, on a press release. So, um, because that's hopefully going to picture it up, pick it up as a um, as a lengthy article. Oh, um, excellent! Good deal. Uh, the last thing I wanted to remind folks of, although I'm always here to do it in person, is um, Arbor Day. Uh, and not sorry, the uh, the um, what is it called? The Children's Post Tree Tree Poster Contest. Right? Arbor Day Poster. Thank you, Arbor Day Poster Contest. Um, I don't know if we've gotten word out to all the schools. Rich, can you tell me about that? Have the schools gotten forward that, that poster announcement from all? No, but I will take care of that. Okay. Because that's, um, the deadline is March something, right? March 15th. Okay. Yeah. And I think it'd be neat.
if we could have a few submissions from fifth graders in the next room. That is it for me. Um, I don't really, the only thing I have to report on is that the, just to follow up on the conversation I've had with Aspen Realty in regards to 115 Bridge Street where the over shade tree was cut down they recently planted one there and uh, reimburse us uh, under Mass General Law 500 bucks. So they're, they appealed to the mayor's office and I'm not sure what the conversation was but I got an email a few days ago saying that can please send a letter with an invoice. So um, other than that, that's really about it. Other than I'd like to say to all of you, thank you very much for all your support and hard work to make this whole urban forestry community program. Well, I don't think we have a name. Do we have a name yet? Do we have a real name yet? We don't have a name. Mm -hmm. Doesn't need one. You know, when I said, I, I actually, it doesn't need one, this is true. Um, when I stood up in front of, I, I sat there and listened, of course, I was just in shock, first of all. And then when uh, Alex Sherman was talking about all everything that has been accomplished, it, it's a community accomplishment. It's not just me. I'm just kind of at the helm. And, you know, you folks and all, many others are all the engine that make it run. So I just want to say thank you for your support. Thank you for the folks who are going to be there. It was quite more actually. I'm still get choked. I still get choked up. <laughs> so, but thank you, and that's all I have to say. Lots of thanks and. I mean, I don't know what am I going to do for an encore now? <laughs> you know, what are we going to do now? We've got to plant 400 trees. Yeah. <laughs> so. You just keep it up. We're doing a great yeah. job. I agree. I agree that it is a, um, an incredible group effort, and there are so many people that make what we're doing possible. And as I said to Rich, I think it's okay for him to bask in the knowledge that he is holding this and doing a fabulous job mm -hmm. at it and <coughs> that he deserves that shout out. So. All right. Anything else from the tree warden? No. Okay. Excellent. All right. So um Todd, you got a chance to read over the notes in the dis of the discussion we had last week with Carolyn Mish. Mm -hmm. Um I'm um, wondering if you have any reactions, and Rich, what your next steps were, um, where you took this to, and you know where we should go from here. So you're, you're talking about the ordinance update? Yeah, the, 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 solar, the solar PV. So the, the recommendations that were uh, approved at the last Public Safety Commission meeting were incorporated in the document and has been forwarded to uh, the Mayor's office, and then it will be sent to Council. Um, there have been no no changes to the document of any kind. Okay, and I I thought that the reason why we needed to move quickly on this was the council was meeting in between the last meeting and um, they they were, but so it was sent to the mayor's office okay. and the mayor puts his seal on it and it gets sent to okay. front of the council. So council has not deliberated on this. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. No, no, because the next the next today is this the next council meeting is. Uh, Tomorrow. Okay. Um, so it will be referred to the committee, I think. But I can check with Carolyn. But then after that, there will be um, plenty of ample opportunity for us to actually um, either listen to public comment or if we need to make public comment tomorrow, we can do so through the, because the, you know, there is that whole process that has to go through, just isn't changed overnight. Okay. So, but I don't think there will be any. There was some, uh, there was originally some. <coughs> suggestions to change the language, but that got it to something different, and I wasn't afforded to. But then, in the end, it just stayed the same. Where what we voted upon. So. Okay. Okay. Todd, do you have any reactions to what we recommended to Carolyn? No, not really. No, it looks like the main recommendation was instead of twenty-five thousand board feet, we went with five acres. And instead of instead of the or term or timber, which is more narrow we replace it with the word trees which is pretty broad yeah yeah so both both the um, site plan or the special permit trigger the significant uh tree ordinance for replacement um, so that that alone is a significant uh, 
difference between what they've done in the last two years. And um, Todd forwarded to us, I don't know if anyone got a chance to read it, but an interesting news article that came from Cambridge over the fact that their city council is deliberating over a um, tree cutting memoriam, mem right, uh, moratorium. moratorium. And, and um, right after they, they had just that conversation, a bunch of trees were illegally, not illegally, actually perfectly legally, cut down by developers in anticipation of any potential moratorium. So what Carolyn is doing is actually kind of wise, which is to try to fast track this ordinance change to protect, protect the trees that could be legally cut down for PV installation. So, hope it won't trigger the same sort of <laughs> reaction in North yeah, it was weird. It wasn't just developers, it was the city contractors and private homeowners. Just everyone rubbed up their chainsaw that the next day. <laughs> yeah, including a mature, a healthy, mature elm trees. Yeah, it looked like it was a shade tree, frankly. It yeah. Like it was really quite a one. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, um, okay, so if there's nothing else on that topic, I'm going to move us along. Does anyone have any questions or comments about that? Is this the same? Uh, this was the same line that we were going to actually refresh the the uh, commissions. Todd and I are actually still working on the permitting the the, the tree per, tree impact permit, but we're actually going to be doing it through the actual trench permit. So Todd and I met earlier before this meeting, kind of hammered out some few things, and Todd is going to actually write a draft that actually be inserted in the trench permit language, which will be part of that permit process which also includes driveway permits. So any work in the public layout, they would have to abide by a set of rules that we set, which are uh, governor of mass general laws, plus whatever we strengthen, you know, like our tree, tree protection, air spading. Uh, so that was part of that. Great, and that will not require any kind of approval by any other bodies? No, no, just, just once the language is drafted, um, we'll review it comment upon it and then I'd like to send it to Alan Seawalls for his uh, comments and then if he doesn't have any or recommend changes then after that it will go to the mayor's office for the mayor to look at it and then if everyone's okay we we'll can implement it put inside the actual trench permit body. So. Do the trench permits still come to you even though you're not the yes. superintendent mm -hmm. of the street? Yep. Yeah they added a line uh, F, F P and C is my Acronym. FPNC. That Forestry Park Cemetery. So it goes to both. Yeah, it goes to four different. It goes to the four different people. Uh, so yeah, so I see everything. Matter of fact, I got a, I got a, I got a pile. Beth brought me a pile right here. Fact, so. All right. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move us then on to our next agenda item, which is a presentation by Christina. Um, I. Uh, Want to? Uh, I want to mention that you know, Christina offered many different presentations she could possibly make because she's got many areas of expertise, having pretty much spent a lifetime in this field. But since we are in the thick of working out a long-term tree management plan, I decided that, that her her um, knowledge of that might be uh, most useful to us. So I forwarded her already the Davy Resource Group tree management plan that we commissioned. Um, and the, our tree planting plan that our subcommittee has been working on. So she had an idea of where we are. So take it away, Christina. All right. And thank you for being here. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much. So, so excited. So, um, yeah, sorry, you guys. We can turn around. So, um, I worked on two uh, urban forest management plans for the past cities um, that I uh, lived in and worked in. They didn't have as much awesome material that you guys already have. Um, some of these cities were quite large so that uh, street tree inventory wasn't really uh, doable. Uh, we didn't have the staffing or the funding. So um, really what you know you've got through with, with Davy is, is a tree management plan and it's it's fabulous. It's you know you've got a, a picture of your assets so you kind of know what's in the, the bank. Um, you've got a great um, idea of your species, diversity, 
you know, where you need to plant, where you need to go. And that, that's what tree management plans really, really help. They help um, the tree warden, you know, make decisions. They help people decide where are they going to spend their money, where are they going to um, plant things. But they, again, they're kind of, um, the, the one that Davy did, that's, that's very ambitious. Uh, you've got a lot going on there. Um, you know, it, it's always going to be promoted to teach you how to um, get things done in a timely manner. So the tree pruning cycles, um, the tree removal things. You know, that's stuff that, you know, almost everyone's going to try to recommend you keep on top of, but depending on staffing and, you know, what's going on in the environment and how many dead trees or pruning trees or storms, that's always going to vary. Um, so um, I'm going to kind of jump a little bit and talk about urban forest management plans, which are a little bit, you know, the tree management plan is just a component of an urban forest management plan. And every city is going to have a little bit of a different um, way of, of doing it, depending on the city's size, their um, uh, commitment to the urban forest, and what's going on. So generally, there's three things going on. And this was this was taken out of the city of Virginia Beach. We had about half a million people. It was 358 square miles. We had seven different watersheds. Not really comparing apples to apples. Um, so the first thing you know you kind of look at is quantifying your urban tree canopy and that's citywide so it's not just the city owned trees it's you know what is in the um, privately owned trees Virginia Beach about 80% of our tree cover was on private property so the city could only do so much to improve tree canopy we only had 20% of that chunk so we had to do a lot with the public and trying to promote people to plant trees on their own property or try to preserve trees on their own property because we would just run out of room in the city if we wanted to add more trees. So you kind of stop with, you know, that's with the top-down approach. It's not so much looking at each individual tree, but a whole canopy. Can I ask questions along yes, the way? Yes, absolutely, please do. All right, so I don't know if we quantified the canopy cover of Mark Hampton. Um, and if we haven't, um, if you now just how you do that how, how do you manage that? yeah so so um there's different ways so um in the city of chesapeake virginia we had our own um lidar mm -hmm. photometry and we had our own gis specialists uh, so we did it in-house mm -hmm. uh, with the city of virginia beach we um, had a, a grant from the department of forestry and we worked with uh, private consultants and we actually uh, looked at our tree canopy broken up by watershed um, so depending on the tools you have or um, you know access to satellite photometry, it's come a long way. I mean, we just saw the screensaver for this picture. Whoever took that photo of uh, that was beautiful. Like right there, you're looking at tree canopy. So um, there's different ways. I think even at UMass, students are dying. The GIS students are dying to do projects. So. You know, I think a quick answer to that is that we've had the offer by Wayne's office to provide LIDAR information and, and then communication just sort of petered out, but we can certainly. Yeah, LIDAR is cool because we had it in, in the Norfolk area because we were uh, dealing with subsidence and sea level rise, so the LIDAR helps with elevation. So when you're looking at a tree canopy from the top down, it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of like maybe the maturity of trees because it can go with the height. It doesn't tell you the health, the species diversity, things like that, but your tree inventory that you did with Davy does. Um, so again, and this is very measurable. And so you do yourself a checkup every five years, every 10 years, what's our tree canopy? And again, that helps with sometimes setting goals. Like again, he's like, do I plant 400 trees? Do I plant, plant, you know, is it a one for one? Or, you know, maybe there's some areas, again, you know, your riparian areas or places uh, more prone to flooding. You know, there, there could be goals you may want to target. Um, and then there's always the um, communication. So, you know, what is it that the people of Northampton want? You know, what is it that uh, the community desires? Um, is it to, again, um, clean the air? You know, we want all the ecosystem services, provide habitat. Or is it more, um, uh, you know, business enhancement, economic development, 
uh, we, you know, we want more trees, safer streets, uh, things like that. So working, finding out what your citizens demand, working with them. Um, and then, uh, again, sustainable management. So yeah, you guys are already doing it. You're talking about your ordinances and your codes. You know, are they effective? Uh, enforcement policies. Uh, one city I worked in, we had, I was a unarmed conservator of the peace. I didn't have a, a gun, but I had a badge and I had big fines. Again, we didn't have tree wardens where, where I live, we were just arborists. So we had to have other ways to help with enforcement or, you know, when you're deciding um, on, a, on a tree, how, you know, is it the, the appraisal of a tree? If it's not a replaceable tree where I can just go out and buy a four inch tree or a two inch tree, what happens when they cut down gigantic trees? You know, they're definitely worth more than $500. So how you, you know, come up with that in your ordinances and, you know, things can, can change. Um, but yeah, uh, also looking at how do all the different departments in the city manage the trees. So, uh, you know, is public works different than um, maybe what the schools is doing or is it all one of the same thing? Again, not knowing enough about Northampton and how your city operates. Both of the cities I worked for were gigantic. There were 10,000 people employed in the city of Rome. You know, too many departments doing too many different things and ordinances that um, kind of um, competed with each other or you know maybe other one obsolete so you know, just trying to look at the whole big thing and how it does everything fit together um, so again and thinking of the urban forest is green infrastructure planning and so the urban forest isn't really just you know a tree it is it swales it's green spaces it's gra you know it's green roofs and you know I, I'm so happy that I moved here and I can, you know, I drive around and there's trees everywhere in New England, but, you know, I've been um, seeing a lot of urban sprawl in the South and, you know, maybe 10 years ago in the little town I lived in, you know, that had as many trees as Northampton did, it, it doesn't look like that anymore. So, um, you know, trying to, to decide, um, you know, working with other, you know, the conservation areas and, and other folks um, who own trees that are not city-owned, um, you know, that's still part of your urban tree canopy cover. Uh, preserves, fire management. We all see what's going on in California. We've had a terribly rainy, rainy fall, so the last thing we can worry about is forest fires right now, but when you have years of droughts, is there like a, you know, a, a fire management plan for the city? Do you do, if you were having a horrible hurricane or a tornado do you have debris management programs set in place so that if it's more than um, the city crews can handle what do you do with all this you know numerous amounts of debris um, and again we're managing the landscapes as ecosystem services not as beautification projects um, and then SIPTED is crime perfection crime prevention through environmental design so you work with schools and libraries and places who say oh we don't want trees because it hides the bad guys it's like well there's other ways you can design and work with trees that it's it promotes uh, safety and it's uh, smart smarter landscaping um, so again the little snippets that came out of some of the different urban forest management programs that I've seen that worked well are a yearly state of the urban forest report. And you probably do one of those anyway when you submit your stuff to Arbor Day, because you, you write down how many trees were cut down, how many trees did we plant, how did we celebrate trees. But there's other things you can do with the state of the urban forest report. Another thing that is really fun to do, and some people hate these things and some people like them, is a tree report card. And you see this a lot of times with watersheds. You know, what is the health of the river? What is the health of the um, the mountain? Or we, so we all know a report card. It's it, it's graded, so you can look at you know is our how is our staffing? How is our budget? How is our tree planting? How is our tree removal? And you can kind of grade each year, and then that helps you to target where you want to move to make improvements. And it's a great thing to hand to um, the public or um, have people understand what you're doing. Of course, Arbor Day programs, um, and then part partnering with, again, watershed and nonprofit groups, the, the wood recycling reuse program, um, 
and then um, you know getting accredited for having an urban forest management plan. Uh, the Association of Public Works usually uh, will give you this, make the city accredited if you have an urban forest management plan. Uh, the Society of Municipal Arborists also accredits cities for this management plan. And then there's like the, you know, the mayor's green cities and sustainable initiative. There's a lot of different things where you have this plan that can kind of boost your sustainability ratings. Um, of course, again, the best place to look for examples of the tree report card, because they've been doing them for a long time, is Casey Tree Foundation. Uh, and it's neat because you can see how they've evolved and uh, got, gone through the report card. And of course, the first report card wasn't so good, but they've improved because each year they, they've got some goals to work towards. Um, legacy Tree Program. To me, this is a gateway into getting people to like trees who may not care about trees or, or care about nature, but sometimes when you have a tree and it's got a, a historic significance, it may not have anything to do with, you know, it's a big tree, but it, it's a tree that had something famous happen underneath it or near it. Uh, sometimes people just get fascinated by that trees in history. And so um, you can ask Molly <laughs> about the, uh, the uh, DCR's tree legacy program, but sometimes that's kind of fun to um, to have that and you know have that on your website or promote it or you know have something in again in the city where people can go and see legacy trees, a tree walk, a tree um, tree shoot. Yeah. Tree well, see, I don't, I didn't know what that was. Yeah. So yeah, you're doing that. And again, work so. Um, Working on the urban forest management plan, you you know you really want to bring in a bunch of great stakeholders when you do this. You don't have to always hire consultants. So, uh, some of the cities do it in house. Some people um, do hire maybe someone to help uh, write the, the, the plan once you get it together. But you know you get folks like um, you know someone from schools. You get uh, a good attorney. You get some business people, you get your arborists, you get your foresters, um, you know, uh, planners, architects, and, you know, kind of get help to um, target the public and find out what are those things that, that folks want. Just like, again, when you get a little survey from the Arbor Day Foundation. I don't know if you guys get that, but it comes in the mail and they ask you, you know, is your city doing a good job planting trees or preserving trees or whatever? You can, work with your public to find that stuff out. Um, again, oh. <laughs> there he is. No, he's, he's not going to get enough of this, but yeah, he, this guy can't do it by himself. You know, and obviously you've got a great support team. He wouldn't be the, the tree warden of the year if he didn't have um, a great, you know, bunch of folks that he's working with already. But again, yeah, well, how can you support, support your urban forestry department and help people um, and you know, because what if he retires? What if you, you know, tree boards are his only, again, I've seen, you know, I've seen great tree boards and then people retire or leave and then you're, you know, people are so, uh, you know, whatever. So just having those ordinances and a really good urban forest management plan will be kind of safe and secure so that if um, things recycle and you don't have as many enthusiastic people around, you're, you're going to be okay. So, and then, you know, I live here. I hope to, you know, find a place if anything ever comes up for sale. I'm looking. <laughs> um, so, you know, reach out to me. I'm around. I'd love to help out any way I can. And um, again, if there's other um, uh, aspects or uh, I can get with you on resources on how to develop a plan, you, know, you, you pretty much have a lot already. It's just um, maybe uh, taking the the daily plan that you had and making it more realistic, or you know how, how so it's not overwhelming. Um, any questions? You're right; it was overwhelming. We we scaled it back. Yeah, you. I mean, but it, again, there. You know, that's if they're going to go with what's ideal. Just like if you go to the doctor and they're like, you should. You know, exercise for an hour every day, eat lots of fruits and vegetables and fiber, and don't smoke and don't drink and do that. It's like, yeah, that's ideal, but realistically, you know, can I have some coffee and I got to do that, you know, and you've got to 
do what's best for you, but that's what's best for the community. So, um, you know, you can, you, you've got a lot of information in that and you can really take it and, and run with it now. So. I'm curious, is there a streamlined way to estimate urban canopy percentage? Oh, you yeah. See that? Yeah, so uh, I other tree. communities, they've had that way before. So now. They're running these technologies. Yeah, iTree is pretty awesome. They have, and so there's so many more iTree tools. And there's, um, there's, I believe it's iTree Canopy, or they would use Canopy or Yeah, so there, some of that you can just look at that, and that's going to really give you a good percentage. Again, you can look at, you know, maybe develop it by wards. You know, like, hey, what is it in this ward? What is in that ward? Again, every city is going to do it. Hey, let's do it by, you know, zip codes, or let's do it by, um, you know, watersheds, or let's do it by. Um, is this this is business this is rural this is urban you you can break it up your canopy however you want and, and again the iTree tools is really the best way uh, right now that isn't really going to cost too much out of anything and then you can <laughs> huh? yeah it's the cheapest way yeah yeah other than you know in-house GIS Some, I don't know what it would be somewhat scientific to be able to communicate well to people and to absolutely prove especially private landowners yeah try to rally people to get them to yeah yeah so earlier we were, someone mentioned the cambridge cutting down trees what the yeah. uh in that article i think it mentioned in a decade they lost 18 percent of their canopy so i mean things are changing it's not a static and we we don't really know whether we're increasing or decreasing yeah, so it's, it's, it's a great benchmark. And again, don't look at it every year because it's not going to be updated. And again, you, the trees need about five years to put on growth, so it's a good 10 year checkout. Right. Mm -hmm. But we, if we have a baseline now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Now. Yeah. For our little and trees. You, right. And again, you've got a picture of, you know, you got your basically a tree sampling of publicly owned trees with the species diversity and the health. So, you know, that kind of gives you a little bit of a picture of maybe the privately owned trees, but still, you'll be surprised where, you know, in Virginia Beach, the largest landowners that did not have any trees were churches or, or mm -hmm. religious mm -hmm. institutions. We, we so, have issues here. So, so again, we, you know, that was something we're like, oh, let's, let's work with, with our churches and let's find ways to help, um, you know, get more trees at um, places of, of worship. So, so that was kind of cool. I, you know, didn't really think of that. We thought it was going to be schools because they had playing fields, and you're not going to plant trees in the middle of a football field. So, any other questions? Open invitation to come back to any and every meeting you want to attend. <laughs> we're so happy that you are a resource in our community. Mm -hmm. yeah. and we will we will continue to um, you know benefit from that. So ooh, really, yeah. And I, and again, I've got students that are looking for projects, and and so doesn't uh, Rick Harper and Brian Payne and you know David Bowen Harris. So we've yeah. got we've got yeah. people that um, you know a lot of resources. So. Okay, good job. We'll stay in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank and you you're welcome to stick around for the rest of the meeting if it, if it interests you. Mm. All right, good. Okay, I'm going to give, um, I'm gonna give us a right. subcommittee report and um, welcome feedback from it. So, <clears throat> Marilyn was unfortunately not able to attend this, but Molly and I had a lengthy conversation. We're trying to, to move forward with a, a firmed up recommendation of, of what our planting should be for 2019 and to some extent 2020 so that we start getting two and three years ahead of ourselves. So, um, you know, everyone always has access to this Google spreadsheet that has multiple tabs called Northampton Tree Planting Plan. And that's where we flush things out. And just as recall, to recall, we, um, very broadly hope to plant 250 trees at minimum per year divided roughly in the following ways 125 to priority streets 15 for arbor day plantings 20 for neighborhood plantings per the project that we just talked about 50 for ward based plantings and then 40 for ad hoc opportunities slash requests so what we thought for 2019 is the following. I'll start with maybe some of the easier ones. 
So neighborhood planting, Prospect Street, done. Like we decided that that's happening in 2019. And then we've actually got something on the um, agenda for next steps on that project. And then <clears throat> for ward-based plantings, what we did is we looked at Molly's very helpful um, spreadsheet of where we are right now in trees planted by ward. And so where we are is wards three and four are very generously um, represented, represented in recent tree plantings. Whereas ward six stands out as the least planted ward so far. Um, in our last three years of planting. So this is with data from 2016, 17, and 18. So <clears throat> what we thought we, we would recommend is that we would make a focused effort to bring this, the Ward 6 number up to about where all the other wards are, with the exception of Wards 3 and 4, which are kind of off the charts well represented. But if we do 50 plantings in Ward 6 next year, we will we will bring Ward 6 up to where essentially Ward 1, 2, 5, and 7 are. Where ballpark is 6? Six? 6 is Marion Labarge's Ward. So Please. it's Ryan. I think Ryan Road area. I think, you know, in, yep. the thing about Ward 6 that makes parts of it challenging is that it's already a pretty canopy. Um, ward, things in parts like off of 66 in, and Sylvester Road and Florence Road, but it's also got those 1950 subdivisions off Ryan Road where oh, there yeah. could be a lot of trees planted. It's not, they don't have sidewalks so much there, right Rich? No, they don't. But they do, but that doesn't mean they don't have right of ways. But they're still right away. They're still right of ways. A, so, a lot of right of ways, 60 feet wide. Ooh, and, oh, wow. And I, you know, so our recommendation is to just focus next year when it comes to the ward based plantings in Ward 6 to bring that ward up to where the rest of the wards are. So that's one recommendation. Why don't I just spill all this out and then we can have a conversation about it? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, for the Arbor Day planting, as you remember, one of, one of our categories is that we try and do a targeted arbor day planting to raise awareness to focus on areas where um <clears throat> around community centers last year we did where did we try to do cool dick we ended up doing um, what is that is that of course and that was fabulous and what a transformation that was so our recommendation for this year and this is a, these are setbacks so it's per you know permission is two places ymca and the Cahill Apartments off of Fruit Street, which is a um, low-income um, housing authority-owned area. Um, they took numbers of trees down recently, and they have a very large, I'm saying tree belt, but Rich says that it's actually not city-owned. The, the, so the, tree, the, the area between the sidewalk and the street? No, it's not. At the, the city owns up to the back, so back of the curb. There. Right, okay. So. so we would need their permission. Um, and so that's, so I've talked about neighborhood planting, ward based plantings, arbor planting. Now, ad hoc opportunities are by nature ad hoc opportunities, so we wouldn't really um, prescribe them. However, if we roughly Planted 10 each in wards 1, 5, and 7B. There have no, been no plantings in 7B yet, which is the least. We would, we would really bring all the wards up to at, at least 80 trees over the last few years. And then finally, when it comes to priority streets, we recommend the following. Um, finishing Route 9 in all of the various spaces, finishing Route 10 um, in various places, and finishing King Street. And when I say finishing King Street, King Street might be a multi-year thing. But there, but we did a um, you know a Google overview of King Street, and I've walked it a couple of <coughs> times now in the last week or so. And there are um, there's a lot of promising places. A lot of it is under under wire, so it would be a tree stock question. But um, if we can get the the nursery stock for under wire, there could be a lot of things about King Street. And the reason why we're focusing on those three, is really they continue to be the areas that would give the most impact. They would give the most public benefit in the sense of highly trafficked, so traffic calming, 
aesthetics, gateways, um, you know, air quality, all that stuff. So that's our recommendation from 2019, for 2019. There's some, we have big thoughts for 2020, but I'm happy to first hear reactions for 2019. Uh, so before we take on, we have to finish, we have not finished with Bridge Road. Oh yeah, um, that's actually on the list for 2019 as well, sorry. Oh, and, and Rich, I forgot to mention, you had, you had um, mentioned Woodlawn. Yes, Woodlawn, I, Woodlawn is going to have to be It's a street or avenue? Woodlawn Avenue. Okay. Yeah. Because by the time we're done, we've already taken down eight silver maples along uh, the uh, Child's Park side, but now I have to go on the other side and do some assessments of those trees because they're all really in decline. And um, probably, I would say, another six to seven will probably come out of there. Okay. Possibly. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and as for King Street, we did drill down a little bit and can recommend sections, but we also feel that it's important that once we as a committee agree generally on these streets, we hand it over to the site committee and you guys do the, do the real important drilling down. And did you have any discussion about the amount of trees planted? Well, we just broadly, you know, we have priority trees is 125. Um, ward based trees are 50. This is just per the grid we devised a while back. Okay. Neighborhood plantings 20, Arbor Day plantings 15, and ad hoc opportunities is 40. So it's a total of, of minimal, at minimum, 250 trees. Did we discuss or did you discuss any uh, like priority species or species groups that we should be focusing on the nope. next year? I, I don't know that that is our purview. Mm -hmm. I feel like that 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 is something that maybe, um, I don't know, is, is that cycling? I don't, I haven't figured this one out. Well, traditionally, Rob and Rich have kept pretty good sense of the families. That we'll yeah, and we, and we have Versus that. our Davy tree. Yeah, um, actually, Molly has made a, a, another, um, another spreadsheet on this, on all trees planted by species. That it's it's a, it's a tab in this larger document that is really helpful. I will say I highlighted some of the trees we seem to be um, gravitating most toward. So this is over a three-year period. It's 2016 to 2018. The trees that we planted at 45 or more are crab apple, ginkgo, honey locust, lemon plain, and sweet gum. Everything else is less than that so I um, a couple things I think uh, first of all this is awesome I think it's like thanks for the work it's uh, very concise and informed you know it's the, the work is in the, you know your presentation is informed by the data so that this is fantastic um, one thing I was thinking about Ward 6 um, um, is I don't know if we would want to get out in front of um, some kind of public information because people are going to think that that's their yard. Is, is, you know, I don't know that they're going to understand that there's a frontage that uh, belongs to the city. Mm -hmm. So I think we should definitely plant there, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's, mm -hmm. but I think we might want to think about that. Um, and then the other thing um, is I have a very strong connection with the CEO of the Y, mm -hmm. and I would be happy to meet with her and talk to her right? sure. uh, if you want me to do it. Okay. Can I put Rich about that because he was going to reach out to the Y? Okay. Unless they have got to do it. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm so happy to talk to her. I really, I've got a very long. That's great. Yeah. I have a follow-up to so you. You're preparing for Ward 6 where you're planting lawns and that would just task Molly if she's seen communities where, where there's no sidewalk and they do large scale plantings in what is city property mm -hmm. but looks like people's lawns. Have you got any experience with that? Yes. Can you tell us about and without any prior outreach. So 
Oh, I think outreach before you start digging and what people may think is theirs, even if they know in the back of their head it's not. Um, I think that's a really good thing to do. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, the next issue is. Have you seen how complete streets has played out in this? Like this? Yeah, um, because because in theory, if there's no sidewalk, if the street already gets tugged in the street, this when it gets renovated, the street if there's going to be a sidewalk. I don't know if I'm correct. In this well, according well according to the city, call it ordinance, but the complete streets order of priority sidewalk when a street is renovated, sidewalks shall be placed on either side. Hmm. Which potentially, we've seen this, means the trees have to then be... Which in a subdivision is ridiculous. Yeah, but then the trees, I mean, this is, uh, this is a Northampton yeah. or a Massachusetts? Well, it's, a, it's a, in general a, Mass it's a Massachusetts standard that's kind of been strengthened in Northampton. Right, so how do we know when we're planting that that, that, that won't happen? That they're not going to then put the sidewalk on the protected check. public shaders. Well, which on Hinkley, Hinkley Ave, mm -hmm. Street, yeah. the sidewalk took priority over a 30 inch oak tree. Right? 62 inch. Yeah, well, 62, 62 inch oak. Yeah. So, sidewalk so I, I feel like I'm out there digging like crazy, planting little mm -hmm. trees. <laughs> the bulldozer's kind of behind me, taking them down. Well, I, I, to elaborate on that a little bit, I think yeah. the engineering department takes into consideration. Obviously, they have they they've been very good. And Hinkley Street is one example where there's only a sidewalk on one side. So the city has adopted the complete streets uh, model, but it doesn't apply to every doesn't apply to every street renovation because it's just not feasible. So Hinkley ended up on just one side. Hinkley, the sidewalk that existed there is on one side only. Except for in front of that 62 inch oak, you have to walk in the street, unfortunately. But now the oak's not very healthy. It's, yeah, it's fair. The health is fair of that tree, so that can change. But so engineering has been very good about, you know, addressing the concerns that, we, that I have in particular and that we all have about public shade trees and wholesale removal of them just to actually make sidewalk that probably won't really be ever walked on. I have a thought about Ward 6. You know, Marianne Labarge is, is such a, a, a force of nature in her ward, and she's so um, she's so active. I thought about reaching out to her directly, and I'm sure she has a very broad listserv, or at least email list, and saying something like, first starting with, Ward 6 has been chosen to re be retrieved this year, Anyone interested in a tree in their yard, you know, here's the way to contact and and let her be the voice and we can start with setback trees and um, you know, see how far we get. And you know, I, I we all I think we all agree that setback trees are almost always the ideal, um, especially you know there where um, there's this area of ambiguity that we don't want to piss people off. So that's the first thing is is doing it through Marianne. And then the second is, um, I know Rich, when, when, we, when we decide on locations for trees, usually stake, stake a little stake that says tree. Maybe what we should say here is a public tree. Um, just get the word public in so there's no question. And um, maybe something like per tree warning or something like that. Just so that, um, that people understand. Really? But at least get the word public in so people ribbon. will start associating with but I um I I would love and, and, and also maybe some me again messaging through Marianne that um that a lot of streets in Ward Six, because they don't have sidewalks, it appears that the I don't know. I feel like if there's a way we can get them in front of this message. Well, I think if we have to have uh, Council of Barges buy it. Yeah. Because Council of Barges will be the first person that will hear any complaints yeah. if we just right. show up and start banging stakes in the ground. Mm -hmm. So I think that if um, we are uh, just, you know, uh, very transparent with her, communicate with her, get her buy in, um, then she can actually address the situation and say, yes, I've talked to the Public Safety Commissioner and the Tree Warden. and. 
Um, we are going to get some public shade trees, which is great. I mean, I'm just looking at tree keeper right now, for example, uh, Pearson Drive. Pearson Drive doesn't have one public shade tree on it. And it's a, it's a horseshoe, but it's a small street that's totally blank. So, uh, but this whole area has a 60 foot right of way. Um, and the roadway, most of the roadways there are no more than probably 24 oh. feet wide. Oh. So there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of room to move. Yeah. The roadway is 24 feet, but the right of way is 60. 60. So we have, we have a lot of land to play with. 60 on the school, 30 on each side, or 60 mm -hmm. and 60? It's, it's 60 all, all the way across. From the middle. Total. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's, it's 30 on either side from the middle. Yeah. Okay. So it's 60 okay. in total. Okay. Yeah. Divided in half, it's yep. 30 on either side. So what happens is when you go to the neighborhood, like Houston Drive often, is that people do have a forest, probably. Right, they got forests in their backyard, and so people perceive, yeah. perceive it differently than so if we you start, turn to work. I have to start with volunteers. Question: yeah. I think it's really cool that we're looking at all these numbers, and um, I'm wondering. I have two kind of thoughts about it. One is since we don't have the heavy concentration of people walking and biking, sh should there be a little bit different mm -hmm. standard than parity for these areas of the city? Where people don't walk and bike. I mean, we've planted in in some of the areas that are new development, and we've contacted the head to get water use, and the people kind of like they don't even come out of their houses in those areas. You know, they they kind of look at you through the window. But if we have area, if we have a lot of people in Ward Six who say we don't want trees, and then we have people in other parts of the city saying we really want trees. Should there be a discussion about, well, maybe we should plant the trees where people really want to help plant them and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. get behind it to like open it up to Ward 6, but do we need to have parity, Ward parity? So this would not bring us to Ward parity. Um, I think that it's, it's impossible for our plantings not to continue to be dominant in Wards 3, 4, and 5. It's because they are downtown Florence and downtown mm -hmm. Northampton. And and so they will be representative in those priority streets. For example, the routes 9 and 10 are going to be mostly in Ward 3 and 4. So I think that we'll continue to see um, the, our, those downtown wards represented more than the other wards. So it's it's for me, there's parity and then there's perception of fairness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the thing we want to get in front of is the perception that Ward 6 is being left behind. Maybe we start with asking the counselor um, to reach out to her constituents and, and just plant where they want to be planted. Yeah, like Lily was saying, like setback. especially emphasizing setback trees, mm -hmm. that these trees are available. Absolutely. And right we, we want to yeah, I mean, want we people have to. Tell us they're interested. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's better to per individually um, uh, contact uh, Council of the Barge or should we invite her to a meeting? Like, what's your take on that? Do you think? I'll probably start with a phone call. Mm -hmm. It's either a phone call or what, what, I, what we can do is if someone is interested in drafting some language, or I can draft some language, I can send her an email. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's probably the best way to start the conversation with her. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, we can go from there. We want to meet with her. I've known her for a while. Sure. She's, she's, I've worked here 30 years, so she's been a council like for 22, mm -hmm. 20 or something like that. So she, she's been here for quite some time. Yeah, so yeah. I have a good working relationship with her. Uh, and I think she would be very receptive. Actually, she was uh, was interesting. She she posted on Facebook, uh, congratulations, and thank you very much for planting all the trees. And, you know, so, I mean, it's really in her, in her, in her, in the forefront of her mind, and, uh, I remember she actually was telling me she goes, huh? she goes, how do you think we can get volunteers to fill potholes? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know, counselor. She goes, well, she goes, you have found a way to plant trees, but we can't get the potholes fixed. Mm -hmm. Like the one the CVS on uh, King Street is throw a uh, grocery cart in. Yes. <laughs> Some cities do have volunteer pothole programs. Well, I, I, that's not my purview anymore. <laughs> so. oh, thank anyways, goodness. Off, huh? off topic, yes. I, I'm, I'm aware that we need to wrap this <clears throat> portion up. Motion to adopt. <laughs> okay, we have a motion. Can you... Motion to adopt the uh, 2019 priorities plan as presented by the, um, by the subcommittee. Second. 
So we need a second before we can have a discussion and a vote. Okay, discussion? Uh, you probably need to have some language in there um, because we're not going to be able to plant everything everywhere like we'd like. So there has to be some flexibility. Okay, so well. I don't know how, because the thing is, is that we, it's all going to be really based upon um, what we find for locations and what we find for nursery stock. And I think that's really just going to be mm -hmm. trying to pair the two together. Yeah, this just kind of sets us on the course for the year, and then the, um, the site planning committee works with you to do the site plans, and then you and whoever you choose, obviously Rob, go out and find the appropriate stuff. Okay. And then you put it there. All right. So, we're going to <laughs> so is that the language? Did we, that? <laughs> uh, did we get some language? Well, I think I mean, most of that is found in the in the yeah. plan of the plan. So then, uh, maybe we maybe you could just amend it to say that uh, the what uh, per nursery stock availability per nursery stock availability or per uh, uh, following uh, the plan the the planting the plan of the plan just so it's because that's really what we're going to end doing what Todd just said so I don't know if you want to amend it or just keep it the same an, an outcome of working with Councilor March yeah. uh -huh. it's going to be up to her whether. Well, that's far, true. That's true for the ward based portion. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, how do people feel about the, the priority streets we've identified, the Arbor Day locations, and of course that's per the cooperation of those two community centers, um, the neighborhood tree planting project we've already sealed, and ad hoc is completely flexible. So are, are people generally in favor of those recommendations? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know a comment about priority streets, and they're mostly. Um, very salty locations, mm -hmm. and the, at the rate that we're planting, we just planted a whole bunch of lemon plane trees and a whole bunch of um, uh, locust trees and locusts. And so what's happening is that at the rate we're planting, we will have planted almost, within a couple of years, all of the priority main streets, 10, King, King 8, 9, and uh, we put a whole lot of underwater trees out um, already on Route 5, I mean not 5, <laughs> South Street. And the outcome of how successful these kind of plantings are going to be in tree belts in salty areas, we're still waiting to see how successful they are. And so I feel like we're, we're moving forward to fill all of one type of location in that uh, a lot of emphasis on buying trees that survive in salt, and so I, I I feel like we're in we're in an overly great hurry to accomplish that. Um, that uh, four years from now we'll look at it. We'll go. We, we filled up most of those spots, um, and we'll have a whole lot of places inside neighborhoods in less salty spots. So generally, you know, well, in part, my my interest in this is based on stock available, because when we go to buy stock, uh, flexibility to be able to buy Persian, Persian ironwood or, or uh, black gum or all these trees that can't be planted in those places uh, are, are available. And so for instance, today, well, already Rich and I have been over to Amherst and there aren't any lemon plant trees. So probably we don't want to plant any. So, so it's partly, what I'm saying is it's driven by the stock available, as Rich mentioned, but it's also driven by my interest as someone who's kind of parcel out the plantings to uh, not rush through and finish all the salty area plantings until we see how they're coming along. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we really are filling them up. I mean, I know there are spaces left, but like, for instance, underwire on King Street, just as someone who's trying to create a canopy is not as compelling as being able to plant a, uh, a large scale tree, yeah. tree or yeah. something. And so, so it's pushing us towards, towards underwire salty, salty area trees. I think if the site committee goes to King Street, you're going to find quite a number of non-underwire sites. 
that was what Molly and I found. I mean, when I say quite a number, I mean like up to ten. Yeah, exactly. But that's not bad. But, I mean, that no. and remember, we're, those yeah. those priority streets are only half of what our plan was. Yeah, yeah, and but, there's a lot of ad hoc flexibility. But that's, I guess, what I'm exactly what you're saying is what I'm pointing out is that we got like ten, maybe ten spots on all King Street left. Thing. But. Yes, and that are going to work. And I think by identifying King Street, we acknowledge that putting shade trees earlier, like in a really good spots in King Street, helps with traffic calming, oh, yeah. you know, stormwater mitigation, a sense of place, you know, sense of calmness going on in King Street. So, I that's that's my interest in yeah. moving us forward in those areas so and, this, so and i leave it up to the site committee yeah. to really identify the best spots so last year we this in 2018 we put in maybe 10 10 10 10 london plane trees on king street so it just means that very quickly we're so it would be my inclination to wait a couple of years to see how the london plane trees do and then go back and, and do the rest of them because again we will fill up king street we will fill up uh we will fill up all these high priority places in a short period of time and i guess that could be a goal to fill in a short period of time it doesn't fit that well with the stock available and it doesn't fit with my sort of caution like for all those underwater trees on route uh on the route 10 I'm, I'm, you know, well, we'll, we'll the jury's still out. So how many, you know, why not wait? Because we have plenty of places. To Although play. the jury isn't out on the species that you chose in other municipalities, the London trees, the London plane trees, oh, yeah. we know, yeah. are incredibly salt and drought resistant, okay. and so that they are a great choice oh, yeah. for. Well, I guess the question is like on South Street, those underwire trees. What happens is you plant underwire trees; they grow relatively slowly, so they're just because smaller smaller species put on less girth, it's more solid. How many of them will actually be there over time as there are these little trees sitting out there being very you know, insulted by it's a pretty insulting place. So I'm just I'm just, <laughs> just saying that I'm not I, like rushing I feel like we're rushing out to fill all of the gateways. And I just don't know that from a Sort of hort, I guess a horticultural point of view, whether that's really the most satisfying point of view. Do you fun. feel that the the language that we've added to this motion to to give you know to give leeway based on nursery stock and to some extent you know yeah you know, site circumstances in your judgment makes this a motion that you can support? Yeah, but I just wanted to bring up this issue so that 100, 125 trees in the priority areas, I mean, 10 King Street, fill up Pleasant Street, and we'll fill them all up, and I guess I'm just saying that. Woodlawn, Bridge Road, 10, 9, and King. Yeah, I'd say. So that gives you a lot of, that gives you some flexibility. I'm just saying, if we, that I think with 125 trees, we would fill all of those, at least all but not under wire places for certain. And I guess I'm just saying I think 125 is a lot, and we should slow down. That's all. Okay. Uh, all right. We have a motion. We have a second. We've had a discussion. Are we ready to make a vote? Well, can we change the number to a lower number than 125? Can I make a suggestion that yeah. we, I think we've already talked about flexibility? Okay. So I think that, you know, yeah. in reality, no offense to anyone here, but you can't do anything without me. So if I say right. it's less, then it's less. <laughs> right. No, but I'm, I'm being, I'm, and I agree with you, I understand Rob's point, I agree with him, that it is kind of a grand experiment in a sense, <clears throat> planting underwire, because we've made a huge push to, to plant underwire trees to, to create a balance on the street and also create uh, a screen and traffic calming and safe places for people to walk, but um, the jury is out to a certain degree as to how these trees are going to react long term to salt exposure. But it's not just salt. I mean, as you can tell, the next eight weeks they're talking about we're going to have below average temperatures for eight weeks straight. We're talking about nights that uh, that are going to go below zero and cold temperatures not any higher than eighteen. And it's this huge yeah. wave so that we're in. So I mean, it's just it's so we. I think what I think I like this plan. Yeah. I'm, I'm in support of this, even though I can't vote on this, uh, and I will support this. And 
we will do the best we possibly can to get all these get these things done and we're just going to have to come back and say okay we can do x y here we can't do this here and like we did all right. in years past one, so, more comment, Reece, one more comment and then we're and then we're going to have to move on i just want to add to Reece's comment that it's an experiment in even places like orchard street where we're planting a narrow tree belts i guess i'm going to say we're putting, we're putting a lot of trees in places that may or may not be successful and so we accept i, I would like to see more trees Go in places where we have a little higher confidence and slow down on the ones where we have a low confidence. Understood. Okay. All that's, right. That's, that's the final. Um, the subcommittee will take that advice. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to take a vote now. All in favor of the planting plan? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Okay. Um, moving on. We are at the planning schedule. And, and so we're on track. Next. <laughs> Seriously? Pretty much. I mean, right? We're on. So we wanted to have to be done by January with our annual priority plan, which we just adopted. Uh, now Rich starts formulating his budget. Uh, and uh, in uh, the next uh, couple months, the detailed site plan uh, committee meets, um, and we start talking about stock and appropriate placement for some of the some of the spring plantings. Yep. So, um, so that'll be on your to list, your sub subcommittee. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. Um, actually, I've been doing a lot of talking this meeting, so Rich, I I want to turn this over to you. Did you ask this to be on the agenda, which is next steps. Yeah, I just, thank you. Um, I did reach out to uh, Ken, uh, Ken Nyman and told them that the, their, their neighborhood uh, was awarded the planting project for uh, for next fall. I told them we'd be reaching out to him with uh, uh, with uh, some next steps and next information. Um, so uh, Rob and I actually went over to, so we're actually, at, those are basically all underwire trees with the exception of the six setback plantings that we think we can squeeze in there. Um, and Rob and I tagged a bunch of underwire trees at uh, Amherst Nursery. Uh, we are also actually going to be getting a, some bare root uh, underwire for the spring as well, I hope. So if that works out well, so we've kind of already kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Um, so you, is, new, is that spring or fall? Uh, I think we're going to. I think we're going to do it in the fall. Well, I think it's going to be a fall planting because I think our where our plate's going to be pretty full this spring. Um, and of course, if we have a tough, if we have a spring that actually just all of a sudden turns to 90, 90 degrees, we're going to have to scale back our planting efforts and just mm -hmm. regroup. So I'm sorry. How many bare roots did you say you're getting this spring? I don't. We don't have a. We don't have a number at the moment, but we have 117 trees tagged at Amherst Nursery at the moment. Oh, those are not bare roots. No, those are all in grow bags, okay. with the exception of there are some. Uh, no, they're all grow bags. Yeah, there's no bare root. So, um, so I, I was probably hoping to probably get maybe 30, 35 uh, bare root trees. The spring plant or the fall plant? Spring. Oh, you try to Yeah. The problem is, is that we are. I mean, it's. In lieu of getting, the only, way, only other way to do it is to get B and B. That's the only other way we're going to continue to diversify our, 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 our planting stock. You know, the other way to do it is what we talked about earlier, was to actually buy the premium liners and actually buy them in the spring and actually grow bag them ourselves, sit them above ground for the summer months, and then actually plant them in the fall, which is still something we'd like to do. But um, I don't really see, and of course we also are waiting for a list from John from Amherst Nursery because he is going to be getting a spring uh, he's going to be bringing in his own premium liners and he will bag them and then we buy them from him and we don't have his actual list of what he's going to be able to get this year so but we have trees that we can actually utilize right now on, uh, I hope that we, we, that we will have them I think over winter well we'll have them for this project so really I guess what I'm what we need to do is just kind of figure out what our next steps are in a sense um, communication wise do we want to do we obviously don't want to do a press release at this point. I would think we want to do a press release more in the future after Arbor Day is over or sometime during the summer months. A press release for sorry. For this real for the neighborhood planting. The neighborhood plant. planting. Yep. I don't know when you would want to time that. Um, I don't I would 
Yeah, we can talk about it. Okay. We can have a separate conversation. So then I just didn't know if there was, I mean, there really is not a lot to do with this project at that point, but I just wanted to get that out there that we have made the, okay. you know, I told Ken about it, we have found some nursery stock and we will, um, you know, because we don't really have, I guess in a sense we have, when, we, it's when time comes, we have to figure out how we're going to communicate with Ken, who's going to be responsible okay. for doing what. And then communicating with the other applicant that didn't get selected. Yes, and so that was the other the other issue, is that we have to decide, or you have to decide as a commission, how you want to handle um, uh, Wade's application. I have a, I have a suggestion. Yes. I have a suggestion that one of us, and I'm happy to be the person, let them know that, that that their application wasn't selected, but we encourage them to uh, 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 resubmit next year, and we make no promises. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I can I can write that email as well myself. So okay. Um, when you say resubmit, uh, Lily, do you mean um, we'll reconsider your application as is, or do we expect to put a redo? We could we could even make the make the offer to have you know. A member of the commission or the tree warden talk to him more specifically about the planting. If, if you want to talk for that, but at this point, I, I you know we can keep it brief. And okay. say, All right. You know, I think it's just important to let him know that it wasn't correct. <clears throat> Are folks fine with that? Yeah. I mean, people don't get selected for things all the time. I don't think that you know who's the is. <laughs> He's my neighbor. So I'll make sure that's the case. Okay. Um, okay, can I move on or anything yep. else about? No. I'm all right. Good. Marilyn, I, um, I uh, asked you to leave the conversation about Air Over because so many, in so many years past, you have helped to organize it. Yes, I like this event. Um, things that we've done in the past have included handing out tree whips at City Hall, um, planting trees at the four elementary schools, um, planting trees in certain neighborhoods, including the kids at last year, as well as last year's mailing of our newly released uh, tree planting guide to area landscapers. Well, primarily those in Northampton, or who we know work in Northampton. So um, I assume we'll be doing the tree whips Again this year, which encouraging the schools to participate in DCR's um, poster contest um, and the tree plantings that early suggested. Do we want to do another mailing um, or other any other ideas? How to at least pull the committee first, so everybody has, and, and I'd be happy to oversee. Well, first of all, it, does everyone have it on the calendar? That it's the 27th? Right. Oh, of is April? that Friday? Is it Friday the 26th? Oh, and then it's the 26th. Oh, next, and then April 26th. 26. Oh, April we, we often do two days for the day. Yeah, we, are, we usually do Friday and Saturday. Right. right. Yeah. right. So that's 26, 27. Yeah. yeah. Right, it's the Friday. That's the actual article, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We've done the plantings either on those days or. I think we did it on Earth Day, Day once. Weekend before, yeah. Which planting <laughs> part of the Sunday is that? All right. So, so Trina Hampton, do you still up to organizing the whips? Oh, yes, sure. Yeah, that would be great. And um, I want to throw something in, just brainstorming about, you know, just seeing all these volcano mulch trees. It's just mm. heartbreaking and how much work has gone into trying to save trees, the 80 or so trees that people put many, many hours into work, work into, and then we just to go around and see it. I don't know if there's a way to work that into Arbor Day, that it's not just planting trees, it's caring for trees, and with all the pruning we've been doing lately, um, of, which is caring for trees. I don't know if there's a way to... So how about weave we in take some the same kind of list. educational piece or the same list that we generated last year we could do a, a letter and information about proper planting oh, or um yeah. well, during out how can we promote but but promote the tree care the emphasis on the volcano motion yeah. yeah that was part of it 
I mean, you could you could do something as simple as um, you know uh, where you're handing out the whips. I mean, you could yeah. have just like a little side demonstration. You know, just some I don't know, model or something. You know, just have a tree that's you know a small tree that's in a container and pile a bunch of mulch up on it and just that's make a, a big idea. red yellow on it and yeah. maybe have yeah. handout sheets. Trainer you know? would have the capacity to do something with your yeah. 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 advice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just some yeah. kind of visual thing. Everybody you know? go. What I was suggesting was just making the the mulch and you say like the emphasis. It was kind of wrapped into what we tree, did last year. care, this would be the kind of you know, handout or something like that. Well, We've I done children's coloring things with leaves. I think the I think the educational campaign that we need, I think we need to pour on an educational campaign for Volcano Mulchy. So that's on the agenda. It is, and that's, I realize that. So that's so, why I'm saying that may, maybe, yeah. maybe we don't want to have that as part of the art. I mean, our so, race, have it separate as just okay. one of the critical missions that we take up this year because I would agree with you it's, it's everywhere it's a mess but I think we need to continue that communication with landscapers mm -hmm. so that's talk about that. okay well what I'm hoping to get out of this agenda item is someone who's willing to be the overall organizer for Arbor Day preparations and um, and you know come up with the and just make sure that the, the, the areas that we usually cover, which are the distribution of the tree whips, some kind of an educational component, and the um, Arbor Day plantings, the community center plantings, are organized. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. In, in terms of the educational component, I was thinking of um, uh, a mailing or. Uh, a main workshop or um, or just student involvement is I that what you're getting at to be determined I'm, to be determined okay just as long as we come out of this meeting with an organizer I feel like that organizer can have a conversation we could we could have an agenda item on the next meeting to discuss mm -hmm. that because I only gave five minutes for this that was kind of my yeah. goal for getting through this uh, <clears throat> and then um, I mean I personally think okay imagine could be a prominent part of the educational uh, aspect of Arbor Day. I, I think there's kind of nothing more important at this point in our city where it's just so rampant. Okay, so I mean, not that we can't do other things with regard to volcano mulching, but I think that could be a big part of the education. I'd like to see it. Okay. So when we meet again, I'll have um, some proposals for the volcano mulching as a primary component of our education. Component. Would anyone like to work with Maryland separately? Because that's another thing is that you you know you you can work with a couple one or two other people and or so two. Maybe what are the sites that you were looking at? On um, Street and, and, the and then Fruit Street, the K Hill. Park. So Jen's doing yeah. I'll contact the YMCA line. like this week. Okay. Yeah, and contact her. K Hill is going to be you, Rich, right? Yes. Yep. And then, if you two want to have a conversation about flushing, I can help Marilyn. Yeah, she's certainly. Okay. And YMCA, we'd be talking about 20 feet in the right way. <laughs> well, YMCA, there's a couple of places you have on Massasoit, uh, Massasoit Street. There's all those trees uh -huh. that we took down. But I mean, are we allowed to plant 20 feet in the right way and the tree top that we're thinking about? Potentially. I mean, we are, as long as they agree to it. Right, right. Get the signature from them, yes. Mm -hmm. I have to been there, you know, over this with them. With them uh, and I think they would be very receptive to planting on Massasoit Street because right. they originally had a planting plan there that got squashed because they ran out of plants. Um, and then we took down all those Norway maples that were there. Mm -hmm. And they have like a leadership, um, it's a, a leadership team, it's a youth, youth club there that, um, I'm sure that could be one of the I'll talk. So it's yeah, terrific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all around you. Arbor Day. Yeah, I'll talk. Like, I'm okay. pretty confident. Well, I'm feeling the question is in the past we've looked at um, lists for selecting whips. Has that already been done? No, I have not. I have not received it yet. You haven't received it yet? Okay. No. You think it might but be available? End of this month, probably. Oh, no, actually, did, did Dave Hawkins present that? Yeah. He did, so it is out there. So I'll, I'll I didn't get, I usually get it. I don't know if it's been mailed yet. Okay, I will get oh. a copy of it. It's actually expanded, I think. Yeah. There's quite a few tree species on there. Oh, okay. Well. So Rick Harper says that he has a, a, an American Elm hybrid whip for us. Mm -hmm. 
Tell me you contact them about I have, one in, my, I have one in my garage. <laughs> I have a spot in my He's got plenty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On Elm Street. Priority site. Yes. Set back. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to move us along. And real quick, as an aside, I'd encourage Trina with Hampton to perhaps explore uh, a fundraising element to Arbor Day, like maybe getting something donated and having a raffle since it'll be all those people collecting woods. Oh, oh. Like, uh, you have to register on them. You could do yeah. that? But yes, yes, take the, the idea. Um, Just ask for money. Or that. We find that when we ask for money, they it's fine, whatever it works. Oh, yeah, that's big money. You can have a, a tree model. I should try that. You want to ask for money, yeah. Sarah? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be counting tax. 50 50 right yeah. well up front. Nah, no fish bowl. You want to ask for three digits or more. All right, I'm going to move us along. Um, I am next on the agenda. So, this is a completely new topic to everybody. So, you know, fasten your seatbelts here. So as you know, I work for the Massachusetts Sierra Club and I do a lot of state level work on transitioning the state to clean energy. And a big impediment of that is natural gas expansion um, infrastructure. Um, and, um, and so there is a, a lot of advocacy at, at municipal level to, to leverage voices um, to, to help move the state toward, away from natural gas and toward clean energy. And um, one fellow um, advocate, she's actually a re resident of Florence, Steve, Dr. Steve Jones, who's a, public health, a retired public health physician, has, um, has educated and organized boards of health all around the Commonwealth to make official statements, um, uh, cautionary statements regarding natural gas. Um, their effects on human health, their effects on the climate, and how we as a state need to rapidly transition away from natural gas as our primary heating source in, um, in the Commonwealth. And so I was inspired, I'm very inspired by Steve's work. He's gotten over 100 municipal boards around the state to um, send letters to Governor Baker. And so I thought that there's a commensurate potential there among tree boards around the state to, um, to elucidate all of the dangers that natural gas leaks have on trees. We know them, we experienced them. There were 100 gas leaks in Northampton um, as recently as 18 months ago. Um, and, um, and to make some kind of statement, some kind of public statement about our need to transition away from natural gas and fuel source. And, and again, all through the lens of the impact that natural gas has on um, especially urban urban trees and the um, important role that trees play, and so we need to protect trees um, in um, mitigating and adapting to climate, climate change. So I, um, I would love to draft something, and I'm working with, um, I've already reached out to other advocates around the state. There's a tree physiologist in, um, that works for Boston University, Nathan Phillips. Do you know Nathan Phillips? He's um, also on the executive committee of the, of the Sierra Club, but he has done a lot of studies on natural gas and impacts, on, leak impacts on trees. And then there's, uh, there's some other advocates. There's an organization that's Boston-based called Speak for the Trees that's doing some work around this issue. Um, I reached out to Henry Lappin, who is the chair of the of Amherst Shade Tree Committee. And he's interested in working on this. So I've already amassed probably about seven people statewide that want to um, put our heads around this issue and see if we can draft a, a, a letter that tree boards all around the state would be interested in signing on or creating their own letter to submit publicly to the governor's office, to the state house, whatever, through um, release op-eds, letters to the after that sort of thing. Um, and so I wanted to present this idea to our bar board and to see how you feel about it, about the concept, and whether, um, I mean, frankly, I'm going to be working on this regardless of whether the Northampton Tree Commission um, signs onto it, but of course, I would love us to be the first 
um, municipal uh, body that signs this and um, and takes to some extent a leadership role in um, in helping to disseminate it across the street. Yes. Uh, two quick points. Uh, one, uh, this year uh, was uh, obviously CO2 emissions went the wrong direction uh, for the first time in a while. A uh, good portion of reason of that is because your natural gas comes from fracking. Uh, natural gas and oil fracking are the equivalent of 1,000 new coal plants coming online in the United States of America. Uh, so to totally agree on the um, uh, climate related issues. Um, and I would uh, definitely encourage us to uh, uh, move this forward uh, with the uh, reminder that it probably should go to Mars. Oh, yes. Oh, th that is needless to say. The next thing I was going to do is go straight to the mayor, where I don't think that we'll find um, obstruction from the mayor's office. Could, could you send us some reading a little bit, just like an article or two? I or? did send an article. The, the Watertown one. Yeah, the Watertown one. That's Nathan <clears throat> Phillips. Yeah, I, I found that in relation to trees, not. This is about not relation to trees. Oh, that was it was about planting trees in Watertown? No? It was about the impact of gas leaks on, on trees. trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you want something just on natural gas as a, as a, as a um, greenhouse gas? Yeah, exactly. Well, okay. what, what, uh, they're trying to transition. Yeah, yeah. So about the transition. Uh, no, or the transition to what? Yeah. And how that's going? Wind and solar. Well, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I mean, in other words, they're, they're saying transition out of natural gas. Yeah. We got two types of transition. One is for the generation of electricity, which obviously wind, solar, low right. impact hydro, et cetera. Right. And the other is for heating and cooling. And what is that? The state has taken some steps to encourage uh, alternative heating and cooling technologies. So um, those would be uh, geothermal uh, or air source heat pumps, mm -hmm. uh, solar hot water for heating your water, right. Uh, right. and also biofuels, which happen to be wood chips. Uh, we'll innovate that forever, um, but that goes the, that's where the um, the state is providing some pretty significant incentives for us. There are, yeah. So I just look anything about. That. I'll, try, I'll see what I can pull together. But, because actually, the Watertown article I thought was not well informed about trees. The idea of moving over three feet and that, that was going to save that was not good. I mean, Rick's been way in here, but gas doesn't travel that way. It travels horizontally and vertically. So. The water center article thought that was really bad, hmm. bad okay. science. Well, Nathan science. Phillips, who was interviewed, is a tree physiologist. So. I, I understand that, yeah. so it was, but it was weird because he was saying, I mean, about trees, the gas kills trees, yes, but that you can avoid having the tree killed by gas by moving it over a few feet, that was the part I found. Mm -hmm. that, uh, mm -hmm. I just okay. make yeah. sense to me. Because he probably knows about trees, but he does, doesn't necessarily know a lot about gas. It seems like that. No, I mean, reading the article. Yeah, this guy does. He does. Well, it seems yeah. very odd to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, it also could have been the journalist who interpreted it. It could be. What? Yes. <laughs> no, really. It could have been the journalist. Yeah, I looked at it yeah. and it was like. Oh, yeah. wasn't it yeah. was a tree journal. I'll see. You know what? That's, it was a patch uh, I'll, I'll bring up. There's yeah. definitely yeah. There's, um, yeah. education. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, you know, resources we can yeah, pull, um, put together because this would require doing some presentations to boards of. Right. Yeah, and, and actually, another. Molly, I know that you are you, you cannot be political, so I'm not going to pull you into this. But I know that there you have access. To, I I feel like I've seen this on your on the, the DCR website at different points in time, and that is lists of, of tree commissions, contact information, tree wardens <coughs> as well. Um, we have a list of tree committees, but tree contact committees. and no, but no contact information. Um, it might have web pages. Okay. All right. Will you send me a link to that? All right. Um, so I didn't give myself a lot of time for us to discuss this, but any other um, thoughts besides Todd's? Rich, you're glaring over your your uh, reading glasses. Just thinking. I just. I mean. I just think whatever. The commission decides to do. They decide to draft the letter as a commission that does have to go to the mayor's office. That's my only recommendation. Yep. And then the mayor will decide how they want to proceed from that. But I think it's <clears throat> definitely. Do I think it's important? Definitely. It's I mean, big. as far as natural gas infrastructure and expansion in Northampton, in a sense, there really is not much expansion. Well, we have a moratorium. We have a moratorium. There, however, is uh, there is a lot of uh, natural gas work being done 
replacing mains and people's health services, which has a direct daily impact mm -hmm. on some public shade trees. So I have to say that Columbia Gas has been very good in the past because I see all the trench permits, so I get to review all the projects, so I actually get to meet with them. I forced them to do a bunch of things they didn't want to do last year on Massasoit Street, so they're they are picking up their game, I should I should say. Yeah, yeah. repair of the existing infrastructure is something that we would be in favor of. Yep. <clears throat> Which I am as well. Uh, so But it's the investing in the infrastructure that locks you into another forty, fifty years Correct. that we want to because the article talks about not wanting to fix the leaks and um, that, I didn't quite understand that. Oh, like if well, you look the at the bigger company picture. Said no incentive to fix the leaks. Yeah, maybe I'll go back and read it again. But it sounded almost though as though they wanted to take all the money you would use to fix leaks and no. put it into alternative energy sources. I didn't quite understand yeah. the logic in that. Whereas I live on one of the streets with really bad gas leaks. So yeah, I want my leaks fixed. Absolutely, no argument. So the next step would be for you to bring a draft to yeah, the committee. Yeah, I'm going to have an introductory, um, you know, conference call with these allies, and then we'll try to pull together the draft. Okay. I support this, Lily, and I, I like your your uh, desire for us to be in a leadership role. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I'm not altogether convinced that tree boards are going to leverage that much political power on this. But it's just another, it's another body of people that care about the environment. It's, an, it's another set of stakeholders that can um, raise their voice. And, I, and you know, I think as we've all found, people who are passionate about trees are really passionate about trees. And they are, so they're, they're, they tend to be great political participants. So we just need to reach out to them and you know, raise their voices. All right, um, tree ordinance and update. Okay. I'm um, Saturday organizing, and we had a wonderful time last Saturday. We had volunteers out. It seemed like it was going to be really cold, but the sun was really warm, and where Rich positioned us, it was quite delightful. And um, looking forward to playing out the rest of the dates for this pruning winter for Saturdays. And then for Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I would ask comment from Rich and Rob on how is that going? So Tuesdays, uh, this past Tuesday, I wasn't there, but we're uh, still uh, moving on on Village Hill, trying to hopefully finish that up with the Village Hill folks. And Wednesdays, we went back, Wednesdays, we're back in the park. And we're basically we're concentrating our efforts to do young tree trains on Ward 4A at the moment. That's part of Pulaski Park. So um, I don't know. Rob and I were discussing today. We've, we're trying to quantify how many trees we can actually put volunteers. I think Rob and I kind of came up with a six <laughs> today. Well, we're pruning trees that yeah that are in very poor form. I mean, yeah. they're, they're overgrown. Yeah. They have to be used. They have to use ladders. They're already 15 or 20 feet tall. There was, and it's a little discouraging because you know we're making up for things that didn't happen in the last five years. And it's slow, and that's what's happening in Village Hill, happening in Florence Field. But one nice thing is that a couple of people who are, are not particularly well, they haven't done that much pruning. There was one tree that was in the young tree train form, you know, small tree, and they went and pruned it in half an hour together. You know, it was great without Rich Dry being there. And so that's the future. Because when we go to prune the trees that we planted, we will reach them before they're six inches in TDH, which is what we're, we're pruning six inch TDH trees a lot. I mean, we're just not prepared for that. You know? Do you have like co leaders that that's well, sort very of few. That's the point. That's the point. Rich, Rich no, I mean co leader stems. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, how about quadruple? Uh, yeah, quadruple yeah. leaders. I mean, we see, yeah, it's there is. It's like you gotta just close your eyes and just. It's, it's very hard to get yeah, 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 to make because kind of you're taking out so much, you can't, you can't clean it up entirely. You can you, you, you cut off yeah. a couple of coat, you know. The, mm -hmm. the, the particular species that they planted at the bottom of uh, uh, Pulaski Park, Rich thinks there are, there are some kind of maple frost that includes silver, and so they, they grow like crazy. Yeah. 
and then they're all and they bend so you have to throw them out. It's so not working out the trees that were specified at the plant. I think they just got loaded on the truck and that's what they, they, they landed. And you know, they look like red maples, but they, I mean, like yeah. this much growth. Not like any red maple we've ever seen. No. I read so, about those. Yeah. Yeah. Can you sell them out? Yeah, they're so. the wrong tree. Are they the wrong tree for the wrong for the site? I mean, no, I mean, not, I mean, yes and no in a sense that they're growing so fast that they're actually probably, I'm glad we're training them now. I mean, there's a, these trees were planted last year. <clears throat> we typically don't go back and do jump tree trains for at least two, two years. Mm -hmm. But these are so mature and they've grown so fast that we have to stay on top of them because they're going to just grow so quickly that they're going to be, they're, they're going to be weak. They're going to have predisposed to weak wood to begin with. So, yeah. um, no, we can't really, I, I, they install them with a crane, and I really, I really don't want to have to change them. But I think over time it probably will because they're probably going to fail because some of them sank after they plant. They were planted so they were a little too deep, so on and so forth. So, well, that was all filled in too. Right? Yeah, that, that so it yeah, was quick. It was the turnover yeah, was yeah. quick by the time they yeah. so filled it in and then didn't get the soil. Right, so the subsoil is probably not compacted all that well. Right. So, so it's good that we're working over there. Yeah, we get a lot of nice. People say thank you, and, and people seeing us out there from Lasky Park is and, very visible. And it's very nice that yesterday, today, and probably this Saturday, people show up to prove. I mean, people come out. We have plenty of. Because I haven't really reached very far, so. Um, Okay. Just keep it on. You are on a list. I don't know. Is it got pushed out because it filled up? Okay. Because if you have. We had Bob Goss and Rich, and you only really need two volunteers. You mean, I told you can only yeah, that's as many. It's not like you can just broadcast it. Yeah. By the time you kind of just run into somebody in the supermarket, the shift's filled. Yeah. Kind of uh, thing. Yeah, I, 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 Paige emailed me, and um, I was on vacation, and now that I'm back in town, I, I will be happy to come out. And okay. And also so. Greg, did you reach out to Greg, the guy who was at the last meeting from um, now, not yeah, my training guy, Bartlett? I, 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 I did it in a separate email, yeah, just thank you for coming to the meeting. And yeah. The Polar Vortex is still part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, cool. I wanted to talk to Rich about that, like what he was offering and how it would best fit with the city program um, and not siphon off that great energy. <laughs> to a project of my choosing, but for with Rich and Chris. It's basically, I'm scheduling Saturdays. Wednesdays and Tuesdays are self scheduling. They schedule them. I don't have anything. Oh, I'm working those. Yeah. Nice. What? The volunteers yeah, we got, we have organize a volunteer themselves. It schedules yeah. Tuesday and one that schedules Wednesday. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So that just happens. Awesome. But Saturdays, I'm the person. I can okay. All right. Oh, great. <laughs> so that's about, you know, that's it, what's going on. Okay. Um, anything else from Tree Northampton? Yep, that's okay. Project with loose, projects with loose ends. I thought that we would start circling back to things that we've talked about in the past and just say, hey, where are we with these and what does it take to move them forward? Um, <laughs> so one of them is. I don't remember what we used to call it. For, one, for a while it was a memorial legacy tree program. Carp, we talked about a carbon offset program because um, I had a, a friend reach out to me and said, I feel guilty about the flights I take, so I'd love to donate to trees. <clears throat> and that was all wrapped up in this general topic, but that is not really progressive. So that's one. And the other is, so we talked about volcano mulching and an education effort we, we want to have around that. We already have door knockers for it. We talked about lawn, lawn signs, but we have that. I'm not sure where that is. So those are the two topics that I wanted to just bring some either closure to or decide where we want to go for next steps. In that same group, there was any other like recently we talked about something to put on the tree saying this is yes. I can't remember exactly what yes. that was. Um, that was um, notification when we plant brand new trees. Remember the tag? Yep, I have those. That's done. You have them. Mm -hmm. The tags. So they're ready to go for right. the next next round trees. Yeah. That's and, fabulous. Uh, I reached out to uh, Justin Pelis, who is the grounds foreman at Look Park, because Look Park actually has a memorial or commemorative tree planting program already, mm -hmm. and I'm looking to get their language. 
Um, actually, Ed Etheridge, I believe, drafting language because he's a trustee, so if we're interested in doing that. Okay. Um, we need to have some kind of language to push forward that we can actually, you know, solidify or you know, solidify what we would like to do with so we have a program. I think it would okay. be a good thing. Do they have a labeling thing they do? Or, you know, or I don't know. That's the other thing, too. That's a whole other subject yeah. I thought about myself, actually. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how they I don't know how they do it. They have plaques. A lot of the places have plaques over there. But I was walking around Smith College campus yesterday, and they have just really nice plaques. Huge you know. donations. Like yeah. at least four digits, like high four digits. So, um, you know, the... the the effort to go through putting a plaque on a tree and then really, you know, making sure that tree stays alive, it, it doesn't come cheap. Um, so that, there's that. We also, I think, bandied around the idea of just having a database on the website. Yeah, like virtual. Mm -hmm. virtual. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. do we really want to put a thing on every single tree that we plant that's a, a legacy tree? You know, are there alternatives? No, also I mean, there, there are, but what I found to be interesting, just, you know, I was a student at UMass, and one of the great things is that I had a course, I just walked around on campus for like four months, just drawing pictures, and every tree had a label, and I was at Smith yesterday, and every tree there <coughs> has a label, and I thought, what a wonderful thing to actually do uh, along the lines of the actual tree speak, mm -hmm. but if we actually at some point wanted to just label our own trees, or certain particular Trees that are notable be something we should look at. We could actually we could actually do a virtual um, commemorative tree program, but actually create our own labels for the trees themselves. Which might be something that we could do. A little tag, a, 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 a tag that could turn into a plaque eventually once the tree is mature enough that you could actually affix to the tree instead of actually having. Uh, you know, charging, not charging, I should say, or asking for a donation of X, Y, and Z amount of money um, for that particular tree, we would actually just do it virtually in memory of someone and we actually would have a plaque on the tree itself. I mean, I've thought a lot about this because part of the reason I've been thinking about this a lot is because of my niece that passed away from the opiate epidemic, mm -hmm. or from opiates actually, so I, it really is, uh, it bothers it bothers me a lot, actually, that there are so many people that have passed away from that epidemic, and actually, how you know we are we are trying to actually fight the epidemic for people that are still alive, but well, not forgetting people that have passed away. But how interesting would it be to actually commemorate certain trees for a certain amount of people, and how that would all work? And that's been rolling around in my head ever since she passed away. So this is kind of why I'm reaching out to Oak Park. I want to see what they have for commem commemorative. Uh, plaques and what they actually do and can we do something that is actually um, not too terribly expensive you know how, how would it look I don't, I don't have any idea I mean we're planting a lot of trees so the question is is that you know we are we're planting trees in a sense in, in uh, you know because we are trying to diversify our own urban forest and replace trees that were lost and you know at some point in time I think it would be nice to try to memorialize folks somehow I'm not really yeah. sure. I'm not really well, sure. Well, you know, we we have a piloted a model of tree speak. Yes. And so I think that's a good starting place. One, you know, <coughs> that the tag itself will be very pretty straightforward. But I mean, it could certainly have if we if we decide to expand this model, it certainly have at the end, you know, in memory of or in honor of. And then on the on the um, audio, it could start with this tree was planted in memory of or in honor of. Well, um, so that's an idea that we could just build on what we've already we're already starting. Um, so one of the things I thought about would be interesting was to model after that using the QR code and actually having uh, sort of like a virtual wall. So if you want to dedicate one particular tree to multiple people that have passed for a particular reason or multiple people that have imp have had an impact on uh, where we are today, that you can actually just use your QR. Through our reader and actually go to a website that actually would have people's names on it, uh -huh. um, so you could do multiples. I don't know, you know, it's one one way of doing it without actually having a fancy in the ground plaque and all nine yards and everything. Like, so they do the same thing in Child's Park. They they have the plaques actually embedded in the ground or on benches. So I'm going to reach out to uh, them as well. Okay. But,
All right, so, so is this something you're taking on? Uh, well, Rich, I'll work with you because a couple okay. years ago I had done some initial right, research on Perfect. this. I had looked at three or four communities. I think of Peewee, Massachusetts, one in Connecticut. Okay. And I think, if I remember correctly, where we left off was we, we were discussing possible ways to tag. Well, we're going I like the, uh, I like the, the virtual it's just option. Stuff that's going around. Yeah. I don't know if it's just a, it, is, it is, but it, but it, but it also was just on a grander scale. I think that we have a tendency. I think that got reinforced after I listened to the accolades that were spoken at the when I when I received the award. It's you know all the work that we've done. You know all the in, all the work that we have done as a group. It took a lot of people to do that. So it's just you know maybe it's just a lot of thoughts that are just firing around in there. I don't know, but. It's Make sure these programs it connects people with something that's beyond ourselves, the, the life of a tree, and that's why they're so touching. I think. Yeah, I would agree. Right people. I would agree. But I just have to, I'll be more than happy to yeah. share any information I get from what Park I'll send it to. And let's just keep in mind that it makes sense to build upon what we were piloting if yep. it, it ends up being a successful program, the tree speed. Yeah. Um, I'll just, I can send you some information. Um, there is a, um, uh, a service called Plants Map. Are you familiar with that? No. So you can go up to a tree, take a photograph of it. It could be a shrub, it could be a, anything. Um, and you, you upload it, and then you, it basically has its own um, like web page, and you can order the QR codes from this plants map people or have your own and so anybody who comes up to the tree can scan it and then you know as much information as you want about that tree and a photograph and mm -hmm. beyond that so and the web and, and there's a website hosted by plants yes map. yeah and so they make their money because they're trying to sell you the tags but you can still upload a picture and a map and so anybody who's using the plants map can just say oh Hey, I'm on the corner of this street and that street, and you know, whether there's a sign or not, and they can look it up and see if the, it's on the map. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a bunch of different programs that are out there, like that. Um, may or may not yeah. cost too much. Okay. One question I have is, you, you suggested building on what we're already doing, Molly. So, could some of these commemorative trees be trees that we've already planted? Or are we thinking that in memory of somebody we would intentionally plant a tree? Or could we go back to plants or trees we planted in? I don't know. I mean, I would love for you and Rich and whoever else is interested in this topic to maybe perhaps meet separately, make some proposals and bring it back to us. I don't know that we can answer that right now. But, um, I, 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 I would agree with Lily. I don't. I mean, it's just like in the thought. Like I got all kinds of thoughts that are just really aren't connected. So right. I have right. to try to connect them to figure right. out if we can spin something up that's actually going to work. So let's, so let's just and, just, and it's sustainable because I think I think about yeah. a tag. Like certainly a tag that you you affix with a you know a zip tie onto a little branch is you know something easy to do, and then something that we're we're guaranteeing stays on that tree in memoriam that. That becomes a, right. a bigger, a more ambitious thing. Right? It does, and, and then there's also the backstory of actually, you know, where, where's the data housed, who manages the data, yeah. um, you know, so on and so forth. Sort of like we're doing tree speak, it's taken multiple, taken quite a bit of time to get it accomplished. Um, so, but that's all has to be figured out. Yeah. Okay, um, and then the last, the, the, the other project that I identify as a bit having a loose end is, is the lawn signs of volcano mulching. Um, I, regardless of where we end up putting them, I think the idea of having the lawn signs that have the language that, I, you know, that are roughly, I think I, pro I proposed to you, um, Rich, a, um, a scaled down version of, the, of roughly the door knocker volcano mulching signs. Um, I think that there's value there because I think it allows for it to be a visible public campaign about poking the whole chain. And it doesn't have to be in a place that we can, I think we can figure out where to put post them that feels helpful. Okay. Like even just in public, you know, on public. Like 
So um, is that something that we can move forward with? Do you have a budget for that? Mm, I don't know. We can figure it out. Yeah, probably. I'll yeah. turn it on a billboard. That big billboard coming over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a public service announcement. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think. I think one of the places where you can do this actually is in the spring when we put when we plant trees in the public right where we like to put free trees to good homes. Mm -hmm. I think that would be the ideal place to put that because it's not really targeting any individual business or residence that has volcano mulch and you really don't want to be you know, it's like going in the middle of the night and shoving a lawn sign of the opposing candidate you don't want to vote for on their lawn. I, I don't I don't think we should go. I don't I think we should actually Come from the, um, like you said, as a, yeah, it's a more educational approach. So I think it would be good to do yeah. something like that. Because um, you were, were you talking about putting them out where people <clears throat> have done it improperly oh, to shave well, them? Well, I mean, if, 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 no, not not to out people. Okay. But how long can no, you get out? I didn't say I don't that. See, I don't see the, uh, any problem in putting them on the public right of way in King Street if they happen to be near trees that are volcano mulch. That doesn't bother me. I mean, hopefully, then the people that are responsible for those might get the may, might get the message. But it's more that it be in highly visible places so that it's um, you know people read the information. Mm -hmm. They do, and it works because a lot of people called last year, a lot of emails. So that's free trees. Oh yeah. Yeah. How yeah. about a front page article? Mm -hmm. Good. Um, we well, we got the practically got we practically got that with yeah. with their effort on the yeah. we did get that mm. yeah it was a lot that's mass development yeah all right so <laughs> I'm gonna it's close to six thirty and I I'd like to close this meeting at six thirty mm. six twenty seven actually so I'm gonna skip over any other business I anticipated by the chair well I have a quick question any word on the man. Um, just that we there it was a record number of applications. Yeah, that's the only word we have. Right? And Julie is actively keeping her finger to make sure that they're moving through the process because they have to go up and come back down. Oh, I see. Okay. So, they're moving. All right. Good problem to have. All right. So now we're going to move on to the to do list so that we can do that quickly before we um, and I'll just start. Um, either Rich or I are going to reach out to Mary and Lamar if we can figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, what else am I going to do? I guess the sub, I don't know if the subcommittee he doesn't really need to meet again, uh, except for maybe to work on 2020. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, going to obviously work on this NASA gas thing. And uh, I'm going to keep helping my daughter move along with tree state, and hopefully it'll be roll rolling out fairly soon. That's it for me. How about we go this way? Okay, I'm going to make sure to get uh, Greg, Christina, Lily on the Saturday list. When we're hoping to have a whole list of dates and work with Marilyn on Archer Day. Yeah. That's it for me. I will work on incorporating a public shade tree protection and preservation into the existing code structure and permit structure. Yeah, that's it. That's you want to do it? No, I got to watch it away. Uh, email uh, poster date contest information to the school principals, elementary school principals. Uh, email ward. Uh, on uh, Monroe about the uh, their uh, tree uh, neighborhood tree planting application. Wait, yeah. Wait. Mm -hmm. better get that right so we can call them more now. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to dig up the actual uh, the uh, Arbor Day whip list, the new one, so we can actually bring that to the next commission meeting so we can kind of select our plant material. I'm going to work with Marilyn on the Department of uh, Science. And uh, look into the lawn sign cost for volcano mulch. Do all, do all the other stuff. Was somebody contacting Mary, Mary in the barge? Yeah, Richard yeah. and me. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to Refresh? Yeah, I'm on. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to contact Julie at the YMCA about uh, Arbor Day planting. Um, I will uh, wait for the uh, email about the site selection subcommittee and uh, I'm still um, I haven't been able to get in touch with the planner but I'm still working on that. 
Doing, uh, about cleaning uh, two or three days a week um, and trying to find a better way of uh, organizing the educational aspect of it. Maybe some other people will speak into that. We're, we're, we're still trying to find our way to how to, how to do this. All right, uh, between now and the next meeting, which is three weeks from today, I'll be meeting with Sue for Arbor Day Next Steps, meeting with Rich for commemorative trees, Next Steps, and perhaps meeting with the subcommittee meeting specifically for 2020. All right, excellent. Good work, everyone. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The meeting is adjourned at exactly 6 30. Wow.